stay tuned and let's take a look at this Marvel Legends Strange Tales Blackheart Build-A-Figure Wave, Dracula. Pow, and welcome back to the channel, Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember now you can hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. Today, we continue checking out the Marvel Legends Strange Tales Blackheart Build-A-Figure Wave. As in front of us today, we have Dracula, quite possibly my most anticipated for this whole lineup, as it's Dracula in his warrior blood red armor. Now, very much a modern look for Dracula in Marvel Comics. Definitely not how he first appeared and not the traditional sort of pop culture look for Dracula. This one is way cooler. We get two interchangeable heads as well, one of them showing off his fangs, a uh, build a figure piece for Blackheart, fisted hands, and then a sword for Batman. Battle, of course. So I will show you the reference when we open him up. This is the new style packaging for Builder Figures moving forward in the box. You get a picture on the side, that same image on the back. The smallest write-ups ever. It says, the legendary vampire Vlad Dracula rules over the undead, spreading violence and terror on his quest for power. And then as always, you get a list of all the figures in this wave. You need to build the Blackheart Builder Figure. Today we're reviewing Dracula. So without further ado, let's get him open. So here we have Dracula out of the packaging with all those accessories laid out on the table. And yes, I'm well aware I have a white background and Dracula's skin and hair are white. So I may have to figure something out to show off those head sculpts. The rest of the accessories, we will go through them in detail shortly, but I did want to mention he comes with the first Builder Figure pieces I have required for the Blackheart Builder Figure. You know what to do, subscribe to the channel and come back as we always build and review the Builder Figure last. And I'm very much looking forward to the Son of Mephisto, Blackheart. Hopefully Mephisto is not too far away. So let me get the tape measure out on this Dracula. So you can see to the top of his head he is just over six and a half inches tall. And in regards to the actual costume design, like I said, it's quite a modern costume for Dracula in Marvel Comics. It debuted during the death of Dracula back in 2010. But it is very relevant as it made a return this very year in 2024 during the Blood Hunt storyline going up against uh, Blade's New Avengers. So this may be one of those costumes and characters that Marvel themselves have gave Hasbro the little nudge to say, hey, this is going to be relevant recently so great timing in regards to getting a legend plus it was also the halloween season so why not a dracula and there is no dispute and he doesn't look great completely pinless by the way and a lot of new molding and sculpting on here definitely not as much reuse as we are used to which is what we want to see so let's zoom in. So let's start off with that pasty white undead skin and the head sculpt. Now this is my preferred head sculpt because this is how we want to display our Dracula, right? With those fangs on show, which they are very much so on this head sculpt. He's also got these big gold sort of pirate style rings hoops on both sides and then a ponytail as well as that is more efficient for battle of course you don't want your hair getting in the way that ponytail is also on a hinge so you can sort of swivel that all the way around and get it in more of a battle ready pose either side like so so uh yeah look at that so you can see the blood shot red eyes as well as the sort of angry uh, eyebrows but it's all about the fangs in the mouth and the gums and the tongue are nicely painted as well. So again, as always, the legends with the sculpting and the digital face printing tech combined make for some epic looking head sculpts. And this one is absolutely that. Look at those evil looking eyes. Uh, he's also got like the pointy elf style ears. Uh, the hair itself is white, but it does have like a gray wash to it to bring out some of that sculpted detail. And as I said, that is your hinge in the middle. So that's where you're gonna get your swivel all the way around. Um, so yeah, this head sculpt looking really good. It matches the skin tone on the neck, of course. The rest of the body is covered in the armor. So before we look at that, let's look at the alternative head. So this expression is a lot less animated, very much a neutral head sculpt, as now the mouth is closed and those trademark vampire fangs are not on show. But you can still see the bloodshot eyes with a little hint of green and the eyebrows are not as angry, but still some nice sculpted wrinkles around the face as he is a very old man 
can remember Dracula. You've still got those pirate style earrings on both sides of the head sculpt with the elf style ears as well. And then the hair sculpt looks similar as it still has a ponytail in white with the nice sort of wash within the sculpt to bring out the sculpted detail and it's also still on a hinge as well so you can swing it one way or the other but this is very much a neutral head sculpt where the hair you want to sit flat as this one is slightly different sculpt so this is your windswept sort of battle ready hair compared to the more neutral uh, sort of style here as well so that one you're not really meant to swivel as around keep it in the middle and then you get our sort of neutral version of Dracula. But as always, you have options for your display. So it is up to you. Let me know in the comments which way you're gonna go. I think there is only one way. Of course, you're gonna have the teeth on show. You have your open mouth fangs out, battle ready Dracula, or you can go for your neutral head scoop. Both look great. So I've switched back to my preferred head sculpt just so we can show off the rest of this figure. I never mentioned, but it is on a dumbbell joint, the head. So you do have your regular swivel like you would, and then a little bit of forward and back. Not as much as you would get on a disc and hinge, of course, but I know some people don't like having the cut on the neck. So there we have the dumbbell. Now the rest of the figure is very nicely done as it is a completely pinless, accurate representation of this particular look for uh, our Dracula. Let's call it Warrior Dracula, if you will, with this blood red armor. So you've got this chain going across the front of the chest and then the torso is broken to two pieces. So you can see there's no ab crunch as they didn't want to break up the design of the armor. Instead, they put the ball joint at the top of the diaphragm. So that's where you're going to get your swivel. So you can see that triangle from the top piece of the armor overlays and does very nicely hide the articulation. And I do appreciate it where they can do that, where you can use a character's costume design to its advantage of hiding the articulation scheme. So that is nicely done. The swivel is under there. Not much forward and back, to be honest. That's going to frustrate people, but it is a ball joint. So you can get a little bit of a rocker on there and your swivel, but forward and back for whatever reason, limited. More so back than forward, but you can see it is on a ball joint there. Uh, the rest of the uniform is just flat with the red paints going down and then back down to these nice big spiky knees and boots. Very nicely done. I do want to show you the arms though, because as I mentioned, he is completely pinless. Look, no pins on the arms, but he's got these sculpted big baggy arms. So that sort of allows them to add a little bit more articulation than you would expect. So even though it looks like they're single jointed arms, you can get them bent more than 90. And that is because you've got these big discs in the elbow. And because of the costume design is like sort of a baggy garment, it sort of doesn't look out of place, even though it sort of looks like it protrudes a little bit. It just looks like part of his uh, outfit. So yeah, you can bend them further forward, but it does mean you can also break his arm and bend it back as well. Cause it's like a disc, if you will. So yeah, not exactly double jointed, but definitely more range than a single elbow would give you. Uh, and again, moving down to the the legs there's no cut at the waist because all the articulation is up there you've got the thigh cut though so again it will break up the design when you move it but at least the articulation is there legs go forward pretty far they go out really far to be honest so no complaints there now the boots do not have a boot swivel or anything like that but again you don't want to break up the design of these boots look at that nice blood red armor there's a real nice texture as well on all of this red plastic same with the armor up top and then the gauntlets on the uh, forearms as well a really nice sort of uh, uh, texture on here and it's just sort of a, a little bit of a glisten underneath the lights as well so yeah it's again it's all layered with the spikes coming off and then you've got even got those layers on the feet as well and you do have regular ankle pivot and rocker no problem at all there so yeah hopefully that was all in focus and you could see what was going on but as of course i have not mentioned the cape so on the back let me move that out the way now. So now we can see the cape uh, done in black and it's all ratty and tatty as it should be. He is in charge of the undead, of course. So I like the way it's all tatted all the way up and down. So then it's not gonna get in the way of the legs going out like so, like some capes usually do. So it's sculpted in this way where it's draped on the shoulders, but it is glued in up top. So you will notice up top here, that's where it's glued in up there. So. It's not plugged in on the back. There's no peg or anything like that. It's glued in at the front. But again, it doesn't get in way of the articulation. Look at that. I can move the arm all the way back and the cape will go up and out the way. So again, you get his sword in hand. You can get him in a jumping pose and you can sort of use that sort of sturdy cape to your advantage to get him in like a battle action pose, if you will. So uh, 
yeah, honestly, people, I really, really do like this figure. Again, look, there's the knees. So you've got the double jointed elbows. Look at that for a double joint. So it breaks up the knee pad so it still allows. So uh, yeah, they've thought about this one, people. Again, you'll probably dislike the range going forward and you'll either love or hate the way they've done the arms. But I understand sometimes you've got to find that balance between aesthetic and sort of articulation and function. And I think this is a nice sort of compromise between the two. As there's no doubt, he looks great. It is an accurate representation of the character in this costume from the comics. And at the end of the day, isn't that what we want represented on our shelf? In regards to accessories, he has his sword. It looks like he has two gripping hands, but only really his right hand is a tight enough grip to actually hold the sword, which does have some interesting detail on the hilt, as you can see. He's holding it tightly, and then it's got that sort of ribbed pattern in the middle. And that is so when he impales somebody, it will literally when he pulls it out, it will literally bring out their guts as well. So you do not want to get stabbed with his sword, that is for sure. So the other hand is more of a, a sort of a gesturing hand than it is a sword holding hand. It's definitely too loose for the sword. But we do get a set of fisted hands, of course, and I never mentioned previously, but there is a swivel at the bottom of those gauntlets as well, where it connects to the elbow. So that is an extra swivel. So when you're posing them up, you can get these spikes on show very very nicely as these gauntlets again match the boots and they match the armor and they are really nicely done great looking figure so let's get our teeth into some comparisons hopefully you can still see his head there on my white background but we have to start off with the daywalker himself blade now we got blade this time last year in the mindless ones build a figure wave definitely the best blade we have in marvel legends but some room for improvement there and blade is a big part of that blood hunt storyline happening right now with the avengers so this is quite a sort of modern day pairing that's for sure uh, we have had another blade in sort of recent memory i say recent but it was back in 2017 that netflix wave the man thing build a figure and that was a terrible blade massive gappage between the waist and the legs and yeah it just wasn't quite right so there are our blade options the new one definitely the better one out of the two but of course you need Dracula to go up against blade it just makes sense Continuing with our sort of vampire comparison, we have Morlan and then one of the Marvel legend Morbiuses. We have got another comic version as well. Now, again, the original OG look for Dracula is more similar to what we got with Morlan. So let's just try a quick head swap. Sometimes I wonder why I even bother trying some of these things. That obviously doesn't work at all. Here we have a couple of spiritual Marvel legend females that I took out ready for my next review it is of course clear and Nico Minoru you can probably guess what my next review is going to be now because here we have Stephen Strange and Dracula for a couple of different body types here we have the recent Black Widow and then I think but correct me if I'm wrong in the comics that Deadpool and Dracula do fight and Dracula chops his head off or something let me know in the comments. And here we have the only other figure I have reviewed on the channel from this Black Heart Builder figure wave. So far, it is of course Halverine. And remember, I always create a playlist for full waves and builder figures on the channel. So never be afraid to hit that playlist button. There's lots of stuff there. And let's wrap up with some of the Who Crew. So we've got Frogman, Tigra, and Hydra Bob. And then last, but absolutely never least, here we have Captain Britain and Hal Fire. Hang on. So, final thoughts on this Marvel Legends Strange Tales Black Heart Build a Figure Wave Dracula in his blood red warrior armor. Remember, it's happening right now in the comics. It's called Blood Hunt. Go and check it out. Blade and the Avengers getting involved with some vampires. And this is a very nice Marvel legend. As I said, I think it finds the right balance between like function and aesthetics as the articulation is there, absolutely. Probably is not as much as the posers and the ACBA community would appreciate. But for someone like me who just wants to get them in a nice pose, accurate to their comic appearance, and put them into my collection on the shelf to be admired they're going to be very happy and it's a new character for the collection as well granted we have had Dracula before I know we've had that sort of uh, Toy Biz Monsters box set but this is the first time we're getting Dracula in this sort of look and uh, in the modern sort of lineup as well so yeah hopefully more monsters are on the way we still absolutely need a werewolf by night but uh, we've got Dracula for now and I think he looks great so you let me know what you think in the comments below is this one you will be trying 
trying to track yourself. What other characters in this sort of world and theme are you looking to add to the collection? But if you like Marvel Legends, you are absolutely in the right place. Like I said earlier, check out the playlists on the video tab and please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Hit all on the notification bell. Don't miss out on a video and please hit that join button. Become a channel member. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciate it. Support the channel. You get to be on the channel. It is so, so simple. Check out a live stream. Follow me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. I'm on Twitter or X at Dan Who Reviews and I will always see you on the next one. <laughs>